Good evening. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Rebecca Powers. And I'm Jeff Lawson. Tonight, Pete Alette, in his own words. It's been nearly 16 years now since we last saw the former Biloxi mayor. Now, after serving time in federal custody for his role in a Lonely Hearts Club scam, Hallett sits down with WLOX News Director Brad Kessie. In this wide-ranging exclusive interview, Hallett talks about his incarceration and about the Sherry murder case. Pete Hallett seemingly had it all. As a child, he was one of Biloxi's rising stars. As an adult, he started a successful law practice with his friend Vincent Sherry, and he later became the city's mayor. But in September 1987, Hallett's world started to crack. Somebody executed Vincent and Margaret Sherry, and by 1991, fingers were being pointed at Hallett. Six years later, Hallett was a defendant in a conspiracy case linked to the Sherry murders. July 17, 1997, Pete Hallett arrives at the federal courthouse in Hattiesburg surrounded by family and friends. He left court that day in handcuffs, surrounded by U.S. Marshals. The former Biloxi mayor would forever be known as a convicted felon. It's pretty devastating, you know. It, um, it's not something that I would uh, like to see anybody go through. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll have to retract that statement. It, it, there's a couple of people I wouldn't mind see going through that, but I wouldn't like to see any good people go through it. Fifteen years, nine months, and one week later, Hallett returns to Biloxi. The handcuffs are gone. His family is back by his side. But everywhere he goes, he's haunted by that 1997 conviction. Why did you want to do this interview? Why did I want to do it? Well, one reason I wanted to do it was because there's a lot of misconception out in the public and and, and, I'll, and I'll be honest with you I think most of that misconception comes from the reporting that the media the media has made about this case and I wanted to try to clear up some of the issues. Pete Hallett tells me this interview may be the last time he talks publicly about his 1997 conspiracy trial. During that trial the government successfully linked Hallett to a Lonely Hearts Club scam run by some of his clients in a Louisiana prison. However, the jury found him not guilty of plotting to kill Vincent and Margaret Sherry. Nevertheless, people still wonder if Hallett had a role in the execution-style murders of his law partner and his political rival. So that's where we started this exclusive interview. Were you involved in any way? with the plot to kill Vincent and Margaret Cherry. Again, there's, there's not a word in the English language strong enough to couch my denial in for that. I had absolutely nothing to do with that. Absolutely nothing. And had I had anything, had I known anything about it, if I would have known anything about it, I would have done everything in my power to prevent it. Have you, over the last 16 years, reached out to the Sherry's children at all? And if you have, what have you told them? And if you haven't, what would you like to tell yeah. them? Well, uh, as I said just now, when you asked me about whether or not I was involved in, in, the, um, in the murders of Vincent Malgren, I, I wanted my answer to be directed, you know, first of all, to their children. Because, you know, you know I, I've lost a lot. My family has lost a lot. But I don't think by any measure that that my loss and our loss can be compared to what those children lost at the time. I call them children. But, um, you know, when you lose your parents like that, I mean, that, that, that's just such a devastating loss. And, and you know, I, I'm, my disappointment is, again, that, that they chose to believe people like Mike Gillich and people like Bobby Fabian and people like Bill Rhodes and people like Rex Armistead, to, to believe them and not believe me, you know, and to believe that I had something to do with, with that parent's death. And, you know, when, when I saw, when I read of, of Lynn Pizzito going up and hugging Mike Gillich, the man who admitted on the witness stand that he, that he contrived, planned, paid for the murders of Vincent Margaret Sherry. It, it, just, it just like drove a stake through my heart, you know, uh, to see that because 
you know, this is the guy that's, that actually caused Vince and Margaret to, to be killed. And, but, yet, but, and, and yet you know that the family firmly believes that you had something to do with, I, with the murders. I, I know. I understand that. And um, by, back when I was, uh, when I first went into, uh, went into uh, custody, um, my wife and I talked. Uh, Sandra and I talked, and I and I sat down and I wrote, I wrote a letter, you know, that was uh, something that we were gonna we were gonna submit to Lynn, and I, I don't know whether she got it, whether she read it or or what, but I I tried to explain to her, you know, what the situation was. You've always maintained your innocence. Still do. And you've said an innocent man has nothing to fear. Do you still believe in that statement, and do you still believe in the justice system? Well, I, I believe in that statement to the extent that I have nothing to fear when I'm done here on Earth. You know, when, when my life is over with and I have to face this issue before God, I have absolutely no fear whatsoever. None. Peter Lett told me he needed a rock on the outside somebody who would act as his support system while he served his prison sentence. When we delve deeper into our interview Wednesday night at 10, you'll see the former mayor get emotional as he talks about who provided that support. Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Jeff Lawson. Well, this evening we have more revelations from our exclusive interview with Pete Hallett. WLOX News Director Brad Cassie sat down with Biloxi's former mayor and talked to Hallett about what he learned during his nearly 16 years in federal prison. Pete Ouellette admits that when things were going good, when he was an outstanding young citizen in Biloxi, a respected lawyer, and eventually the city's mayor, he was kind of arrogant. But once he went to prison for his role in a Lonely Hearts Club scam, Hallett told me that arrogance quickly disappeared. He said it was replaced by a reminder that what really matters is having a loving family loyal friends, and an abiding faith in God. Still, Pete Hallett knows his name will be forever linked to the murders of Vincent and Margaret Sherry. You know, I mean, there are still people who believe that they have heard on television that I was convicted of conspiracy to murder the Sherrys. And that's absolutely not true. I was not convicted of conspiracy to murder the Sherrys. Peter Lett was convicted on four charges related to a Louisiana prison scam. And for those illegal acts, Hallett spent nearly 16 years in federal custody. You sound angry and you still sound bitter. Are, are you all these years later? <laughs> I sound angry and I sound what? Bitter. Oh, bitter? Well, you know, I, I've had a lot of time, I've had a lot of time to reflect on what has happened to me and what what has happened to me caused to happen to my family okay now I've I've counseled with friends of mine who are priests friends of mine who were bishops friends of mine who were my seniors I've counseled with other other religious people and I understand that you know bitterness is a negative uh, quality and that it's better to it's better to forgive people than it is to hold things against you. But I can tell you that for someone to do to me what some of these people did to me, to say some of the things about me, to call me a coward, to say that my cowardice caused my friend to be killed, to say that I wanted my friend to be killed because of missing money, I don't think that I could ever not be bitter in an instance like that. But any bitterness the former Biloxi mayor may harbor is offset by a feeling of tremendous relief. Hallett is back in Biloxi, and he's surrounded by the people who love him most. For 15 years and nine months and some days, some days, you were locked up in a variety of different mm -hmm. federal prisons. Yeah. Give me an idea of what it was like, what you were thinking, <laughs> how you got through day after day after day. Well, I'll tell you one reason why, 
and one of them sitting right over here behind me, my wife. Another one is my daughter, my two sons. You know, if you've got a loving wife, and a family who supports you, and the kind of friends that I have, the support of the friends that I have, it makes it a lot easier. And I know, I know because I met a lot of people who were not lucky enough to have a family and a daughter and two sons and grandchildren and in-laws and just an extended family that just were totally supportive of me. Once a defense attorney who often spoke with clients from inside prisons, Hollett suddenly found himself on the wrong side of a jail cell door. To tell you the truth, the first night I was, I was locked up, I was, I was stunned. <laughs> you know, I went to the Harrison County Detention Center and, and uh, they put me in this little cell, about a little bit bigger than this dais that, you know, that, that we're sitting on. And uh, I was just stunned. It was raining outside. I couldn't see outside. I was right there on the I-10. I, I could see a little sliver. I could look out and see a little sliver of thing. But I was, I was absolutely stunned. Did you get over that stunning feeling ever? Well, I mean, you get over the stunning feeling. You either get over it or you have a pretty rough time. You know, there, there, there's, a saying in, there's, there's a saying in prison that you could either do good time or hard time, you know. Now, I, I, I know some guys that are doing hard time. I know some guys that did hard time. Um, you know, the, the public has, a, has such a, uh, a disjointed view of what, what goes on in prisons. You know, and I read letters to the editor about uh, inmates having all this free education and this wonderful library and all these wonderful things that we get to do and everything. And, and, and it's just not like that. It's just not like that. Throughout this one-hour interview, Pete Hallett emphasized he was found not guilty in 1997 of having a role in the Sherry murders. Again, there's, there's not a word in the English language strong enough to couch my denial in for that. I was acquitted of count two in the indictment, which charged the substantive crime of murder. Not guilty. Not guilty. So what does a man who's about to turn 71 years old do after spending almost 16 years in custody? He reconnects with family and friends. Hallett's plan is to spend time watching his grandchildren on the basketball court, on the football field, and on stage. Now, if you'd like to see the entire interview Brad did with Pete Hallett, we encourage you to visit our website. That's at WLOX.com. We just posted the one-hour conversation on our website.